and will magnify your holy name. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, mighty God. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, mighty God. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, mighty God. Unto you, O God, who builds all things. For the Bible says that, except thou build a house, the labor is vain that build it. Yes. You are the one, O God, to whom we credit everything that is standing. Yes, My God Lord. and our Father, come and build us up again today. Amen. Come and equip us with the resources, the material wisdom yes. and understanding to build in partnership with you. Yes, to you, we say, be all the glory. Grant us the grace to forgive one another very easily and from the bottom of our hearts. Yes, Grant Lord. us, O God, the grace and the wisdom, O God, to renegotiate fading lines so that we can make progress, O God. In yes, Jesus' Lord. mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Okay. Uh, honey, do you want to introduce today and then I will pick it up from there? Oh, but can everybody want... see me? I think it's only you that can see me. Uh, no, I think we can all see you. Oh, really? Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could all see me. Okay. So we've, um, we've, oh, wow. Thank you, Millicent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, the, the journey to an excellent marriage is one that we must be consistent in growing. We must not come to a point where we are tired of growing, where we are tired of learning, where we are tired of, oh, I, I thought by now my partner should have picked this up. I thought by now I would have, you know, um, learned or acquired this. No. The journey of marriage is an ongoing journey, ever learning. You must always subscribe to a teachable heart, a teachable spirit, and work one hand in hand with the Holy Spirit to teach you what you don't know. Be a permanent student of the word of God. Never arrive in your mind. Even the teachers must be students first. Students of the Holy Spirit, not for the purpose of teaching the Bible or teaching people, but Lord, help me, teach me. And I believe we're in, in for one of such sessions today, you know, building friendship into our marriage. I remember speaking exhaustively about this at the conference today, that I think um, conversations are hard to come by because people are stuck in roles. A man is stuck in the role of the head of the family, stuck in role as the husband over the wife, stuck in role as a father over the children. Instead of being flexible, you know, being flexible to adapt to whatever you need to be to communicate your heart and to ensure that everything God has given to you grows under your care. You know, so you see, this concept of friendship in marriage is so cardinal that I think we need like a second or a minute to send messages to our friends and say, honestly, I think you need to be here to listen because friendship for me is deeper than love. I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying that in a controversial way. I know that love is powerful. Love is God is love and all of that. But I think the nitty gritty, the weaving web that makes love easy is when friendship comes. When there's friendship, is a safe zone. You can say anything on your mind as long as you're careful on how you say it. When you say it and the words you use, anybody can say anything in an atmosphere of genuine friendship. So I just pray that as I plan and desire to be blessed, you will be blessed also. Invite somebody. Someone needs to listen to this, and I know they will all be blessed. Thank you so much, honey, for taking out time to bless us. My note is ready. My pen is ready, and we are all yours. Amen. Amen. Thank you so, 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 so much. That's so beautiful. Okay, now um, I'm going to I'm going to endeavor not to not to rush the conversation so mm -hmm. that we can have 
um, a good grasp and then ask our questions, you know, afterwards. Sorry, can you ask um, I, I, the, um, Ibidu to mute all of us? Because I okay. think some people still get to unmute themselves and it's... Okay. Uh, uh, Ibidu, if you are here, please help us mute everybody. Or oh, everybody, please mute your mic until it is time for the Q and A. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to open with the scripture, uh, Proverbs chapter eighteen, verse twenty-one to twenty-four. Proverbs chapter eighteen, from verse twenty-one to twenty-four. Um, it says, and I read from the King James: "Death and life." are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof then verse 22 says whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the lord then verse 23 says the poor uses entreaties but the rich answer it roughly and then verse 24 now goes on to say a man that has friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother uh, at first look this looks like four four verses in sakatun coming from different angles and dealing with different things yes but in the context of uh, gas lighting and counter charges at the table of reconciliation i want us to use these four verses to pick out four cardinals to friendships in marriage so that we can say we can say that all four they are actually pointing in the same direction because the first verse uh, verse 21 actually is about the power of communication and that's very important in our marital friendships the power of communication the power of communication it can give life or or give death to whatever we are building then the second verse says, uh, whosoever findeth a wife. So it's talking about the power of a good marriage. A good marriage can cause your life to explode in a very, um, in a very, very unprecedented manner. That the only way to describe it is that, wow, the favor of God has fallen upon this person, you know, or it can do otherwise, you know, but let's look at it from the positive that, this is talking about the power of a good marriage. This is critical so that as we begin to contemplate friendship in marriage, uh, we have this at the back of our mind. Number three, uh, it talks about the sarcasm of materialism. The sarcasm of materialism. The sarcasm of materialism. You know, and uh, people would always think that, oh, money is the biggest thing. No, it's not. If money is not well handled as a tool, it can begin to create all sorts of fracas because by itself, it is full of sarcasm. And then lastly, the fundamentals of friendships. The fundamentals of friendships, particularly marital friendship. That each and every one of us need to learn how to communicate in order to keep a growing marital friendship. Each and every one of us needs to learn on the value that good marriage is going to bring into your life so that you can commit to building it. Each and every one of us must understand the sarcasm of materialism so that you don't hold a good marriage uh, uh, hostage because of your erroneous perception of what materialism uh, yes, I, I mean, all the value of material, uh, materialistic, you know, wealth. And then lastly, this fundamental of, of good friendships, that he that must have friends should not start with putting the search light on the people as though I, I, I'm looking for somebody who qualifies to be my friend. I, I, what I'm looking for yeah, in a marriage partner, this one doesn't have it, this one doesn't have it. Because life can be such that we put the search light on others and we carry a scorecard. We put the search light on others and we carry 
like jump questions, since a lot of us are from the Nigerian extraction, you, under, you understand jump, the joint admission matriculation board exam. We just carry um, test, test questions around and our communication with people becomes so journalistic uh, in their interview because you are actually trying to judge them first whether they qualify for your love before you let them in. But scripture says, no, 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 no. That if you want to pick friends before you set out to pick friends, make yourself friendly. Make yourself friendly. So the focus of scripture is on you being friendly than on your partner being friendly. I'll put it like this for those who are not yet married. The focus of scripture is on you being the will of God more than you finding the will of God. <laughs> you see, God is more, more, more interested in you becoming the epitome of his will in marriage. And without apology, let me put it like this. Some of you not yet married can do better than those who are already married, but because your marriage is being delayed, should not make you to begin to discount these capabilities that you have already developed. Your day and your time will come. You know, like my wife would uh, popularly say, it is better to wait than to waste. But while you are waiting, don't lose your goodness. Don't lose your goodness in communication. Don't lose your goodness in, in handling the values of a good marriage. Don't lose your goodness as far as, you know, putting material values in their real place where they're in servitude to you. Don't lose your goodness as per you being somebody who is just automatically good in friendliness. Don't lose all of that. Don't lose them because sarcasm, sac uh, because you see, uh, 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 okay, uh, I think, um, okay, yeah. Thank you, uh, Ibidu. Once you take over, the difference is clear, you know. Thank you so much. All right, so, like, so don't lose what you have while you are waiting. Don't lose what you have while you are waiting, okay? So having said that, I've come to discover this. Please, if you are writing, write this. There is no perfect child of God on the planet yet. There's no perfect child of God. And because there is no perfect child of God, you cannot find a perfect person to marry. You can't find a perfect person to marry. And because you can't find a perfect person to marry, I conclude by saying this, you do not need a perfect person to be married happily. Hallelujah. Now, the conclusion of this formula that I'm developing is this, that in every marriage relationship where friendship is being developed, wahala will spring up every now and then. Quarrels will spring up every now and then. Disagreements will spring up every now and then. But when disagreements come, it is imperative for us to be quick to move towards the table of reconciliation. It's so important for us to be quick to repent when we have done wrong. Be quick, be quick to say, I am sorry. Be quick to initiate reconciliation. Be very quick about it. Which now brings us to the subject of today. When you get to the table of reconciliation, please avoid gaslighting. Avoid gaslighting. What is gaslighting? Gaslighting is a methodology that people use to change the focus of a conversation to turn around the direction of a conversation, to change the issue on ground when they are in error, so as to divert the attention from that issue and turn the table against the person who is complaining about what they have done wrong. Gaslighting 
If you check it out in the Wikipedia, it will tell you that it is a form of psychological manipulation. It is a form of psychological manipulation that those who use gaslighting at the moment of reconciliation, when reconciliation is being negotiated, those who use gaslighting, they use it to manipulate the situation. They can so use it to the point where you that is complaining, you begin to query your sanity. You begin to query your own self-confidence. You begin to query your perception. You begin to query your memory. Because with gaslighting, they turn the table so fast on you, they begin to wonder, is it me that is not remembering properly or is it me that is not perceiving what is going on properly? How come what started as me complaining about what they did wrong has now become me trying to beg my way out that I didn't mean to do them wrong? Gaslighting can be that bad. And guess what? Gaslighting always goes hand in hand with counter charges. Gaslighting always goes hand in hand with counter charges. What's a counter charge? Counter charge works like this, that when your partner comes up and says, um, uh, sweetheart, I want us to discuss this red pen. Uh, it's the issue that I've been on my mind concerning our relationship. You know, um, I've tried to deal with it without drawing your attention, but now I really think we need to deal, deal with this. Then for the person who's going to do counter charges, so, oh, Okay, if, uh, since you are bringing up the issue of the red pen, I also have the issue of the black pen to talk about. Can we talk about the black pen too? And what happens is that when they bring counter charge, the issue that was initiated is no longer treated. It diverts attention from the red pen to the issue now of the black pen. But remember, this black pen was not in issue as far as this relationship is concerned until your partner brought up the, the red pen. Instead of you to allow the red pen issue to be addressed, resolved, and set aside, solved, set aside, then on another occasion, whether a second away, a minute away, a day away, a week away, after the red pen has been resolved, you now say, honey, I also have an issue that I think we should discuss in this relationship. It's about this, my black pen. So that matters in your relationship, they can experience what I call systemic serial treatment. Systemic serial treatment systemic serial treatment, one case at a time, one case at a time, one case at a time. And each case that comes up, it is treated and laid aside. But when you begin to do counter charges, reality has shown that at the end of the day, the person who initiated the matter of the red pen, being grieved by the fact that the issue that they raised is not being addressed, that another issue has now been brought up as a counter charge. Their, their pain over the red pen now makes them incapable of yielding to your suggestion that this is the time for us to discuss the black pen. At the end of the day, neither the red pen nor the black pen issue is resolved. So what we do is that we sweep them under the carpet, none goes resolved, and we continue to live on in the journey of the marriage with issues all resolved because somebody is using counter charges to defeat a Attention to distract attention to, uh, to, 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 to defeat the attention that should be placed on the issue that was raised per time so that we all can resolve it and set it aside. So we have two things on the table. Gaslighting, which is to turn the matter on top of the other person, which is to manipulate the situation until the other party who complained begins to feel as though they are the ones who have a problem and counter charges. So here are the few things that I need us to see or to learn or to take note of about this attitude 
remember, we are coming from building good friendship, good marital friendship. And if you can hear me, please uh, put your phones, put your audio on mute, please. Mute your audio so that it doesn't come across until it is Q&A time. For a quick recapitulation, we've read from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 to 24, and we've learned from that the power of communication in friendship, the power of good marriage as a goal for every one of us, the sarcasm of materialism, and the fundamentals of good friendship. And so we've come to this issue of gaslighting instead of giving attention to what your partner is complaining about. So gaslighting happens in the following order. Number one, denial. How does gaslighting happen and how does it fester and destroys relationships? Number one, denial. Denying the reality of what has happened, denying previous agreements to the point where when your partner raises the issue, you deny completely. You tell them they got it wrong that what they are trying to remind you of is not like that. You so twist it in such a way that they just go to bed wondering, either something is wrong with my mind, my brain, or my partner is doing something to me. Denial. Denial. Please hear me. Hear me. Uh, in, in, in a do colloquialism, marriage is for see finish. You know, so... Don't worry about your weakness being laid out bare in your marriage. That's the only way the relationship will bond. You can't keep being political with your spouse. You can't keep using transactional interest. If I accept this now, that means I'll lose my edge in this area. So I won't accept so that I won't lose the edge, even though you know the matter is true. Number one is denial. Number two, Blame shifting. Number two, sorry, my glasses fell down. Number two, blame shifting. Those who do gaslighting, they are very good at this. Blame shifting. Shifting the blame from yourself to the victim. Shifting the blame from yourself to the, to the person that complained. So if they complain that, oh, why don't you spend time with me? And they raise that issue genuinely so as to move the friendship in the relationship forward. And instead of you to see it from that standpoint, you turn around and, how can I spend time with you? How can I spend time with you when each time I try to spend time with you, you know, uh, you, you are more interested in, in doing this or in doing that? You are more interested in this. As a matter of fact, do you actually think that your claim that you love me is real? I mean, when I consider it, my, and then the person starts wondering, oh my goodness, I'm sorry that I raised that issue. It is not right to shift blame on people when they bring up issues you are doing or saying that is causing them pain in the friendship. Number three, minimization. How do, how do gaslighters, if I must call them that, how do gaslighters operate? Number three operative tool is minimization. What I mean by minimization is that they downplay on the severity of anything you complain about. They downplay on your emotions. They downplay on your feelings. They downplay on your values. They downplay on what you said is important to you. They even laugh you to scorn when you raise a matter that is serious to you. They, they, just, they just downplay it. Are you serious? <laughs> Meanwhile, this is something very, very, very painful to that person that you are laughing about, minimizing it, just to get them to no longer want to talk about it or hold you responsible or accountable for that particular thing. Number four, I call it projection. The tools that people use for gaslighting, number one, denial, number two, blame shifting, number three, minimization, and number four, I call it projection. 
By projection, I mean attributing one's behaviors or feelings to the victim. So that when your partner tells you, there's this thing you do that I don't like, then you turn around and you tell them, you are the reason I act like this. <laughs> you are the one pulling it out of me. Sincerely, sincerely. Though my, in my office, they won't believe that I even act like this. My siblings don't even know this about me. You are the one making me act like this. Don't forget the crux of our discussion. Building friendship in marriage. And the subtopic we are dealing with is gaslighting and counter charges. Avoid this attitude when it comes to negotiating the friendship in your union. Number five is emotional manipulation that they use. We, we all have to be careful about this. Emotional manipulations. That is the capacity to use guilt, use anger, and some would even use self-pity to control you. The capacity to use guilt, they'll make you feel guilty. Use anger. Any matter you raise, their response is harsh anger. So for the fear of their anger, you won't even raise issues anymore. Or they'll use self-pity. Even some use sickness. <laughs> If they want something from you and they can't get it, the following day they'll tell you, uh, check, touch my forehead, check, am I having a temperature? <laughs> and the whole idea is, you are the one making me fall sick. You know, and all of that is just to control. It's not right. It is called gaslighting. It is not friendly. To be manipulative in a setup, in any setup at all, is not friendly. It destroys the sense of value in the other person. Lastly, the tools, the last of the six tools that they use, lies and misinformation. Please hear me. Those who do gaslighting, those who do counter charges, because they are avoiding taking responsibility for what is going on in the friendship, they will lie. They will twist the truth. They will lie. And sometimes even you, you can see through the lies and you just wonder, why are you lying? Nobody will kill you if you accept the truth of this matter. Why do you have to lie? Friends, these keys we are sharing with you, these are the keys that will help you to take away the little foxes that spoil the vine from the friendship in your union. Okay. Oh, my time is almost up. I have a few more things. Okay, let me quickly um, let me quickly give you healing healing keys. If somebody is gaslighting on you and somebody is using counter charges against you, what should you do? Then we'll take our questions and answers. Let me give you five keys very quickly what you should do. Number one, of all that I'm gonna to share today, this is the biggest, how to handle gaslighting and counter charges. Number one, are you ready? Write this down. Number one, trust your instincts. Trust your instincts. You are not crazy. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> you are not. You are an intelligent human being made in the image and in the likeness of God. What you are perceiving, what you are sensing may be 99% true. Don't, don't discount your instincts. Your instincts is from your spirit acting out. It's not your intellect. Trust your instincts. If everything looks good and your Noah, your instinct tells you don't go ahead, all these are glitter, it's not gold. Don't go ahead until you can clarify with your conscience. Don't go ahead. So don't discount your instincts. It's very powerful. Don't let anybody take away from you the trust in your instincts. If they do, they will derail your self-identity. No friendship should do that to anybody, especially not marital friendship. Number two, document events. Yeah, document events, as much as possible. Document events. 
so that nobody will turn you into a crazy woman or turn into a crazy man. You know, because each time you bring up something, tell you, no, it didn't happen that way. I'll just go and pull up uh, the sheets. Yeah? This one, I remember after Pastor Ken spoke, I remember I wrote it somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> you know, like those uh, uh, police detectives, they have this small book that they carry. It's not everything they write in there. But the things that are the KPIs, the key performing ones, that this one will help me remember this. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to keep a diary of negative events because the Bible says uh, love does not keep a record of wrongs. But so that nobody drives you crazy or drives you into a mental health situation where you begin to feel deluded, uh, keep a record just to let them know that, no, 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 uh, you are wrong this time. You are wrong this time. I can't allow you to twist it again. I, I still have it like this. Yeah. Number three. Seek support from trusted friends, from trusted family members, from trusted professionals. Seek support. When you're going through a situation where it's all about gaslighting and counter charges until you begin to lose your mind, until you begin to feel like it's almost as though I have no value in this relationship, but just to exist. I'm only here to exist for this other person. Because the things that concern me, when I bring them up, uh, they end up being turned on my head. Seek support. Seek support. Seek support from not just anybody, but from trusted friends and from family members and from professionals. Number four, going forward so that you can heal, so that the relationship can be protected, set boundaries. Set very, very clear boundaries. Set boundaries, very clear boundaries. And number five, the last one, Please hear me. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say don't love yourself. He said, but love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, prioritize yourself. Prioritize your self-care. Put some priority on yourself, being safe, being well, being being treated right and, and being alive and thriving and thriving. You know, I just send the spirit of God, you know, ministering to someone. You know, you, you've been so beaten down in your in your relationship. You've been so beaten down in your relationship that. You, you cry secretly. You cry overwhelmingly. You cry so. You cry. You weep so much in that relationship because it's almost as though your person is disappearing. But I hear God saying to you, I will comfort you. And as I come in to comfort you, by wisdom, now set boundaries. By wisdom, now know. Stand with God to overturn and overturn until it be no more overturn it. No, 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 no. I'm not crazy. I'm not troublesome. I'm not, I'm not mad. There's a point to be made, and I'm trying to make it as succinctly and as lovingly as possible. That's what I person the Spirit of God is saying to you. He's, he's coming in to comfort you in that situation. So you don't need to be crying and crying and crying. Love is for living. And living is for love. Love is not for weeping. Love is not for dying. Love is for life. And life is for love. Hallelujah. Amen. Honey, help me so that we can have the Q&A now. Hallelujah. Hope I made sense. Okay. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. So I don't know what everybody heard, but you know me. I'm a stenographer. I write and I write. Um, well, I think we should try and focus on the healing, which is the progressive. But yes. if you have any question, please 
bring it out, type it as a question or mute if you can. Trust your instinct. Don't discount your instinct. Don't feel pressure. Clarify with your conscience first before you let anyone else. That's the first. Number two, document events. Mm -hmm. Number three, seek support from trusted friends, family members, counsel, or professionals. Number four, um, so you can heal, set boundaries. And number five, prioritize your self-care. Be safe, be well, treat, be well treated and thrive. Yeah. You're quite Don't good. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm sure everybody can relate with all of this at any point in the marital journey or even in any friendship at all. Any of this can feature. And if, I think the way you started on is that if you want to be a friend, show yourself friendly. Many times, or more often than not, people are a product of where they are coming from. Oh. People do many things without even knowing that oh. they are doing these things because they are all a product of where they are coming from. Oh. It's going to take someone to lovingly point it out. That Do you know that you can be like this? Do oh. you know that you do this? Do oh. you know some people were taught when they were growing up, oh. don't accept defeat. Mm. Don't don't mm. accept defeat. Mm. Fight your way, wriggle your way out, but mm. don't accept defeat. Mm. As much as they were trying to build defense for you mm. so that you don't mm. appear as a weakling, mm. they don't know that they were training you not to be flexible or pliable where you will not need. So you are raising defenses where there is no fight, where there is no war. Where someone only needed clarity mm. because point of view is different from viewpoint. Yeah. If you are standing in front of a car, what you are seeing in front of a car is different from what I am seeing at the back of the car. So we are both correct. Is where we are standing. All mm. I need you to say is, oh, in front of the car where I am, there is a crystal. There is a Benz logo. That Benz logo is not at the back. Stop arguing with me that I, I can't see a Benz logo. You have seen a Benz logo where you are. But where I am, there is no Benz logo. Okay? So this friendship, if you are able to build friendship into your relationship, you will create a safe place where people can talk. Using myself as an example, I grew up in a place where maybe because of the kind of spiritual things that my parents, my the mom in particular, used to subscribe to, you know, all the white garment people will come into the house and they'll be, I, I'm not stigmatizing any sect. I'm just saying what happened to me, I you know? You. And then they will come and say to my mom, ah, this girl is going to get pregnant before she leaves secondary school. And they said, Confounded as at this time, as I saying these things, I was already born again. So there were no, in fact, their prophecy it, it, it was delayed. They should have seen what they should have seen when they ought to have, but nobody saw that and nobody even traced that. I'm at the best stage of salvation, enjoying my life in the Holy Ghost. And every single time you come in because of my body structure, you just kept saying to my mom, This girl is going to get pregnant, this girl is going to get pregnant, put your eyes on her. I could not turn 360 degrees mm. without suspicion. Where are you going? What are you coming? Where did you? Who said this to you? Who did that? So in my head, I just became like a, um, a genie in a bottle because one of my biggest fears, I hate being reprimanded. Mm. I hate being talked to in the public. If mm. you have any problem with me, take me to a room abuse me from morning till night, I won't have a problem. But if you tell me off in front of people, I may never get over it. That's mm. just who I am. Mm. So, getting married, this suspicious mindset, you understand? I just felt, thank God, I'm free from that everywhere you turn. Who is this guy? Who is there? Who are they talking? What are they talking? Do you understand? By the time you come into a relationship, if you are not going to 
peel off that mindset, you are going to um, fight everything that looks like don't bring suspicion around me, please. I'm a oh. clean vessel. I'm the child of God. I don't, do you understand the point I'm trying to make? Yeah. Many times we should just create a safe stone for our spouses. Let them know this is a judgment-free zone. This oh. is a love zone. Oh. Even if you make a mess, make a mess on me. You are oh. safe. You are a work in progress and you will be okay. Oh. If a, a husband can put that kind of environment for his wife, and if a wife can create that kind of environment for her husband, friendship will be so easy to build oh. in a marriage. Because no matter what I do, is it won't kill me. This is that one person that I know would say it's okay. You did it, Abby. And then the person will not be afraid to say, yes, I did it. But oh. if you have not created that environment where I feel safe, I'm coming from a backlog. You understand? Coming from a backlog of suspicious moves that if you don't create that safe space for your spouse in your marriage, it's just going to be what you're going to get and they become defensive oh why are you saying that oh that's where gaslighting may come from mm -hmm. do you understand that ah, please don't add to my pile don't add to my load so mm -hmm. i think everybody listening to us should know that your first assignment is to create a safe zone judgment free zone for mm -hmm. your spouse mm -hmm. it is a task but it's a task worth it because mm -hmm. if they learn this you would see that they will begin to blossom around you and there's mm -hmm. nothing they won't say to you because they know you will, you will not make anything out of what they're saying other than us progressing together. Mm -hmm. I think a few questions had come in and maybe we should just take it. Yeah, uh, somebody had asked if the uh, session is being recorded and available for playback afterwards. I said, yes, it's been, uh, it's live streaming on Facebook right now. Uh, we're using the Pastor Ken one word Pastor Ken Asegeme on Facebook. And then um, I think it's it's going to be available on YouTube maybe a couple of days uh, from now uh, as well. You know, but please, uh, let's have your question on the session. You know, something you said, honey, uh, it, it's so powerful. And I want to quickly flip it by saying this, that as much as somebody might be hearing you right now, and say, ah, thank you, mama. That's what I've been asking my partner to do. Yes, I, I know it's what you've been asking your partner to do, but how about you yourself doing it, <laughs> you know, for your spouse, you mm -hmm. know? Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's amazing how we hear things, but we hear it for the other person instead of mm -hmm. hearing it for ourselves. Yes, because mm -hmm. truly, truly, um, no relationship should die if God mm -hmm. can find one committed person. No you friendship know, should I mean, die. I, I, I found a lingo just by preparing for this message. It yes. says marriages die for conversations that never happened. Uh -huh. Marriages die for conversations that, that never happened. That didn't you happen, need, yeah. You needed to have those conversations. But what was wrong with the environment? Yes. What was wrong if... If Eve had said to Adam, I'm having conversations with this guy and I'm beginning to enjoy it. Do you know how mm. vulnerable that sounds? I was telling them today in House on the Rock, I'm like, it's even easier for a man to come to cry to his wife that I think I'm having a crush on a lady. I think mm. our conversation is getting um, um, sketchy. I think a man, I think nature environment culture allows it for a man to be able to have such conversation with his wife but nature nurture humans culture they don't create such safe zone for a woman to come up to say to her husband i think i'm having some problem i think i'm beginning to like this guy i think i'm crossing the line and forgetting that sin thrives in secrecy. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have simple, small conversations with you, and I appreciate the way you handled my small conversations, how can I trust you with a 
big conversation. So, see, when you're talking about friendship, it's a lifelong commitment to learning this, your spouse, to say, trust me. And then I'm going to watch how you handled when I said, oh, I did this. You understand? The response I get will help me know that, oh, no, it's okay. It's a safe zone. I can't tell it. He can handle it. I, he knows when to be my brother. He knows when to be my father. He knows when to be my friend. He knows when to be my lover. He just knows how to catch me. Ah, if couples can understand this theme and topic that you are treating, we will not have crisis in marriages again. Where else do you run to if not home? If not home. If not home. Where else do you run to? And you know something, honey? I think mm. this this begs the point again that the call in Christian marriage is for us to be imitators of Christ to mm -hmm. one another. Yes. You know? Yes. And um, it should be the, the case, whether it's a man or the woman. You know, the other day, I... I, I studied on a clip from the U.S. where this woman and the husband were telling the story. They were pastors of a very, very successful church. They had already had their three children, you know, but the man was so super busy with work while she was assisting with the development of the choir. Long story made short, she fell for the infatuation with the uh, music director that was answerable to her. And this is a black young man. She's a white woman married to a white husband. Long story made sure they had affairs here and there. That became a sukkah because the boy could see her, but the busy mm -hmm. husband wasn't seeing her, you know, mm -hmm. and um, she took in. Wow. She took in for him. And wow. eventually she had to call her husband to say, wow. You know what? I think I've goofed. I don't think I know I've goofed. And the mm -hmm. husband had to create a safe zone for her to come out with, what do you mean by you have goofed? Mm -hmm. And so she told this whole story about what had been going on with this guy. And the husband said, listen, I can't lose you because you made a mistake. You came mm -hmm. to confess. If you were talking to God, he will forgive you. So I'm going to forgive you, you know, but mm. go and break it up with this guy. You know, so mm. she went. It was difficult for the young man because he was now be really attached, but she eventually broke it, you know, did her best, you know, to say, no, uh, if you are not ready to whatever, I may have to then recommend to the board that you should be transferred out of here or be fired. But I don't mm. want to do a thing that I will regret because it wasn't just your fault. I was partly to be uh, to be blamed. You know, so she began to cut all of that off. But it was just after she had successfully now put it to rest that she realized that I've not seen my period for eight weeks. And then she went to check. They confirmed she's pregnant. So she called her husband again and said, that thing I told you of the other day, I think I've already, uh, something has happened. I was already pregnant from what we did even before I now came to confess to you and to break it up. Honey, the husband said, you know what? We are in this together. <laughs> mm. ah, he turned out his resignation to the church board and they didn't know why he was resigning. Turned out his resignation, then prepared, the hus uh, prepared his wife for them to have this hard talk with their three children. They moved out of that city to another uh, city entirely where she was able to uh, gestate fully and brought forth her child. And the child took strong genes from the father. So it's not like you say, uh, no, this is purely a black child with the, with the white family. This is the Christ-likeness we're talking about. Yes, it's, yes. It's not a worldly standard. And we need to call ourselves to high standards in Christ Jesus. We will learn, see, only accepting a fault is not the big deal. It is creating that safe zone, that safe zone. And it must become something that we're all going to learn, creating that safe zone for our spouses. Learn Sorry, honey. There's somebody yeah. here saying, uh, I'm so stuck. 
I want to open up and pour myself to my ma I, I mean, pour myself into my marriage. But my husband is ancient and modern. Not mm. speaking out is causing so much body pain for me. Mm. Uh, Pastor Tinu, what you are saying is true. Wow. Mm. So how would you advise her uh, for this ancient and modern husband? So like I said, we're all a product of where we're coming from. It may be ancient and modern because that was what was modeled before him. We have all said it over and again, and we repeat that the literate of the 21st century is not the one who cannot read or write. It's the one that cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. And I know if it may sound funny to say you're going to start with prayer, but that for me is that yoke breaker. Jesus mm -hmm. is the creator of marriage and is the one that brought us here. I'm going to, if I was taught like you, I will pray to God because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is where I am. I'm stuck with a guy who I feel does not understand me, does not know what my life is about. Lord, I am frustrated. You teach me, show me the plan. You will be amazed. He may speak to you through a book. He may speak to you through a podcast. He may speak to you through us. He may speak to you through any way because there is no one size fit all. But that guy needs his eyes to open. He needs his eyes to open. If he does not know that his style is wrong, he will keep doing it. We are all like that. We keep doing what we know until a superior body of knowledge comes and we're like, ah, I didn't know this was what I was doing. I was just doing what came natural to me. This gaslighting that my husband is talking about, many of us don't even know we are like that. Yeah. It may just be in a bit to defend myself. It may just be in a bit to say, oh, okay, that's not how I see it. Until you lovingly help me know that what you are doing is actually this and give me time to process it. Change is one of the most difficult things to come about. While I'm going through it, just know, like my husband will always teach us, you're seven over ten. Nobody is that bad. Oh. Keep your eyes on my good side while I'm walking on my bad side. You said it once, you said it twice. Please leave it. I've heard. It may take me time to process, but I'm on it because I'm interested in the relationship. That's why I'm still here. So if this guy is ancient and modern, it, it may not be to confront him first. That may not be it. That may be to ascend in a superior love of Jesus. To just look past this is shortcomings and begin to speak and praise his strength. Begin to praise his strength. Let him feel acceptance first. Let him feel accepted by you. When acceptance comes in, you will be able to treat whatever else you don't like one after the other, but don't confront him first. Don't uh -huh. seek to change him first. Don't seek to make him think you are the worst human being alive first. No, this home of yours is your heaven of peace. Make it work. Love is work. That's the truth. Our time is up. You know, oh, I wish God. we could go on and on and on and on. Uh, but I, I love the, the home run you made. Focus on my good side while yeah. I'm working on my bad side. Uh, mm -hmm. Every day shouldn't be about my bad side. While mm -hmm. you're focusing on that, don't worry, you have said it, I will work on it. You know, mm -hmm. another question had come about setting boundaries. You know, how much boundaries should I set? Are they just physical boundaries or communicational boundaries uh, so that I don't damage the union that is already hurting? You know, Can boundaries. I say something to that, yes, please? Yes, I please. was listening to Joyce Meyer yesterday and she was saying something about herself and Dave and I learned from that. She said when they, because her father was the one molesting her, she yeah. was already damaged good by the time she came into her marriage. But she said as much as she knew that David loved her so much, oh. David did not allow her to push a miserable life on him. She said she has never seen anyone walk in the fruit of the spirit like David. Like that. Oh. You cannot, you, you are the one that is joyless. You are oh. the one that is peaceless. Me, I have joy, I have peace, and I have self-control. And I'm going to barricade your madness from dumping the fence to come and affect, don't contaminate my joy. Yes. I love you. 
but you are not all right. Do your best to work on whatever is not working. But you see that my joy is my, is, I don't know. I understood it. You oh. know, he said, he, she said, so David brought stability into oh. their marriage, she said, by insisting on working in the fruit of the spirit and not being contaminable. I said, whoa, that is wow. powerful. So when you said boundaries, that was what yes. I heard. Yes. Don't just because you want to empathize, don't lose yourself. Self. Your spouse may be going through a bad day. You can empathize. You can, but <laughs> go through it. That, do you? Do you just enjoy it when you are done? I'm here. And then I'm here. You. You yes. Know? I'm not but putting you me. down, but I'm not going <laughs> to allow you. you empathize from afar. <laughs> <laughs> don't dump it on me. Don't dump it on me. Don't dump it on me. You know, I, 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 I learned something in science. Um, what was the word you used again? Boundaries, that's it. Boundaries, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, I, I learned something in science just a couple of days ago that uh, the chemical formula for water is H2O, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Mm. As small as these molecules are, do you know if you add one more molecule of oxygen to the arrangement, mm. it mm. becomes hydrogen peroxide. They both <laughs> look alike. H2O becomes H2O2. And that's, that's totally different. It's not drinkable. Oh. It's not drinkable. So you can mm. love someone and yet mm. put that... Very, very safe boundary. And let me tell yeah. you why. God mm. may need you to, to remain sane so that you can mm. intercede for the family. If Amen. you become into, uh, intoxicated Toxic. with the toxicity, mm. nobody mm. will be praying. God Absolutely. may need you while they are dealing with their issue to be the one who is safe for the children. Because sometimes yes, yes, these things spill into narcissistic dispositions. Yes. And narcissism don't say, I am narcissistic to my wife, but I'm not narcissistic to my children. No, no, mm. no, no. Mm. That dragon just devours everything that comes its yes. way. All yes. right, our time is up and we've got to go. Okay. I'm okay. so glad that okay. you all were able to okay. participate. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Shade, for your contribution. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ibidu, for the comments. And for those of you that ask questions, thank you for your questions and contributions. If you go to Facebook, Pastor Ken, one word, Pastor Ken, I'll say, give me, You'll find this uh, on the on the timeline, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you can send it and uh, rewatch it over and over. But in a couple of days, I'm sure Ibidun will also help us with the YouTube version mm -hmm. of it. All right, honey, please, can you pray for us? For us yes, yeah. before, before we pray, I was even going to say this, especially for all of our listeners in Canada, all across. We yeah. have this drive to bring God's word to as many districts and provinces that we can we are doing our best to make things not ticketed so we're going to be asking for partnership i'm saying you've got dr shadi is in saskatoon and i oh, know okay. her heart, yes she's in saskatoon she's a doctor in saskatoon i know our hearts towards things like this we can work with a long-term plan if we say uh, maybe um, christmas next year or march next year oh Just she's already screaming yes 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 <laughs> Yes, you know, so we can arrange ourselves and trust the Lord we are to collaborate with the church if we don't yeah. want to pay for venue and just we must bring healing. Healing is not something you're going to say. If we, mm. we don't become God's ambulance, you know, when people are sick, they come to the hospital, but there are some sickness that they can't come to the hospital. You bring the hospital to them. You mm. bring the hospital to them. That's the job of an ambulance and mm. that. Um, first aid, let's help our world heal from marital crisis. And Amen. God is trusting us to do it. We must send our money, send our, our everything. All we probably will need maybe a flight ticket and whatever. I'm really working hard on raising partners to get this done. We'll move from district to district. Please partner with us to get this done and the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and pray. And we thank you so much for the lessons that we have learned today on gaslighting and um, and countercharges. Lord, 
Many of us don't even know that we have this in us. But thank you for the light that came from your word today. Oh God, thank you for teaching us. Father, we ask that we will not go seeking to change our partners, but we'll turn the light on in our own souls to see if we are like this, how we became like this, and what we can do to change it. We want, oh God, to receive grace to work on our marriages and be better husbands, better wives, creating better homes for our children. Father, we declare that will not be part of the failure, will not be a part of the waste. Father, we receive grace. We receive grace to build a home where Jesus is glorified. We receive grace to build a home where Jesus is exalted. Shine your light to the world through our homes and be glorified forevermore. Let your blessing rest upon my dear husband. Father, you know what he wants from you. And as he obeys you, studying diligently and dispensing your word, meet him at the point of his need and do what only you can do in his life. Thank you, our Father, for everyone who is here, trusting you for one thing or the other. We agree by faith and we call all needs met in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, everyone uh, that was able to make it today. Please share the message uh, and let them know that this subject of friendship in marriage continues next Saturday by mm. God's grace. God bless you. Mm. Enjoy your weekend. Well, I love you, honey.